Hello, everyone, and welcome to Go to Market AI, the future of your go to market tech stack. I'm your host, Sarah McConnell. And these days, it seems like every company has AI, but on this show, we want to take you a level deeper so you can see firsthand how businesses are actually applying AI to solve your business challenges. We're going to go deep into use cases and showing you live demos of the latest and greatest in AI technology. So today, I'm so excited to be joined by Ami Arad, Senior Principal Product Evangelist at Sixth Sense. Ami, welcome. Thank you, Sarah. So happy to be here. Okay, so Ami, first question is, can you tell us a little bit about who is Sixth Sense? What do you guys do specifically with AI? And then who are you helping in the market right now? Sure. So um, so Six Sense really started by trying to answer the question, wouldn't it be easier for sales and marketing if we just knew who was in market to buy our products? Um, that's kind of the, the foundational question that the company was started on almost 10 years ago. Um, since then, we've been able to answer a bunch of other questions that sales and marketers have. Um, but as you kind of see here in a bit in the demo, um, trying to figure out what that 5, 10, or 20% of accounts that are in market today for what you sell is kind of what Sixth Sense is about. So we have this uh, revenue AI for marketing and revenue AI for sales solutions um, that we sell uh, primarily to companies selling to other businesses um, in lots of different industries with a strong foothold in high tech. Um, and you can kind of think of Sixth Sense as really starting in that space that today we would call ABM or account-based marketing, um, kind of advertising to other businesses is a primary use case. Um, but over the last decade have really evolved uh, to solve problems for other personas um, and really kind of be the central nervous system for a lot of companies uh, for their entire go-to-market motion. That is fantastic. I know we over here at Qualified are very happy Sixth Sense users. I love your product. I found it incredibly impactful for our go-to-market motion, which is why I was so excited to have you on the show today. So with that being said, the main reason we wanted to have this go-to-market AI series was so our viewers can get a behind-the-scenes look and make AI feel really tangible for them because it does feel like everyone is saying they have AI right now. But as a user and as a marketer myself, it's hard to understand how that can work into our tech stack. So with that being said, Ami, I would love it if you could jump into a demo and actually show us a behind the scenes look of Sixth Sense and your AI functionality. And sir, I think you hit on an important nuance there, which is, um, you know, with with AI, I mean, AI is obviously it's been around for probably three decades, maybe more. Um, it's obviously become extremely popular the last few years as compute power has allowed AI to kind of be better at what it does. Um, and so you have every company under the sun kind of bolting on AI to whatever product they've, you know, they've built. And so I think one of the things that makes Sixth Sense different, and I think you'll see it here in this demo, is that oh, really we've had AI as part of our solution from day one. Um, it was very much built on sort of a, a big data architecture with the goal of using AI to make sense of that data. So what we're looking at here is the main dashboard within Sixth Sense. Um, and just to give you a sense of how much data we're talking about, uh, this shows all the different activity that we're ingesting from a variety of different sources. So from a first party uh, sort of data source standpoint, we collect website activity. So our customers put a little JavaScript tag on their website, every page view, video view, all that stuff, form fill uh, gets sent back to Sixth Sense. Um, in addition to that, though, we're also going to integrate with a customer's uh, marketing automation platform. So think Eloqua, Marketo, Pardot, HubSpot, et cetera, and capture all of the marketing activities. So uh, events, um, webinars, whether they were registered or attended, um, email campaigns, all of that we're ingesting into Sixth Sense. In addition, we're also grabbing first party data from our customer's CRM uh, system. So think Salesforce, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, HubSpot. And here we're capturing every phone call that a salesperson logs, every email that they send out, every meeting that a prospect uh, attends. And so website activity, your map and your CRM activity, those are the first party data sources that we collect. In addition, though, we've spent the better part of 10 years trying to help companies do what we call light up their dark funnel. So the dark funnel is a phrase we love so much we trademarked it. Um, it essentially represents kind of the research activity that prospects are doing, usually anonymously, on websites you don't own. 
So a company's interested in a chat solution, let's say, and before they go to Qualified's website, they might be doing research on industry publications, blogs. They might be going to technology review sites like a G2, Trust Radius, Gartner. Um, and we essentially have uh, relationships with millions of different publishers where we get all of that activity data and then use our own matching technology, which is best in the industry, to associate all of that activity back to accounts. Um, so not to individual people, but to the accounts that are doing that research. So you can imagine for any single customer, we've got tens of millions of data points about everything that's happening, kind of leading up to when an opportunity is open all the way through till that opportunity is, is closed one or closed lost. And so where the AI really starts to come, and by the way, there's a bunch of AI involved in how we track which uh, what the pages are about in the dark funnel. So we've got natural language processing algorithms there. Um, you know, one of the ways that you track your uh, dark funnel activity is by entering keywords. We use AI, for example, to recommend keywords in addition to the keywords that that you as a customer might decide um, you want to put in. But I think kind of the the secret sauce AI, uh, sec the secret sauce that uses AI that we're most known for um, is is what we would call our predictive model or our buying stage model. So with all of this data that we ingest, we actually have five or six different um, ML models that run on that data to produce different types of scores. Um, so we have an ICP model, for example, an account profile fit model. We have a contact uh, pr profile fit model. So which personas are most involved right before an opportunity gets open? I'm not going to get into all of those today. This, the one that you're looking at right here, is the one that we're probably most well known for. Um, and by buying stage model, what it's basically doing is it's looking at all of your historic uh, historical opportunities and what were those accounts doing right before the opportunity was open. And it's then scoring every account in your CRM today based on where in that buying journey we think they are um, relative to these other opportunities that were open. So it is a predictive model. And you can see here, this is kind of what a pretty healthy funnel would look like, um, you know, Sixth Sense did not invent uh, the concepts of awareness, consideration, decision, purchase. Marketers have been using those terms for probably close to 100 years now. Um, but it is sort of central to what uh, our customers' revenue operating models look like, which at its core is marketing should focus on awareness and consideration accounts and moving them through the buying journey. Sales should focus on decision and purchase stage accounts and closing business with them. Um, and so it's a very easy way for both marketing and sales organizations to work from the same set of data, to have a very clear sort of division of labor as to, you know, who's responsible, who's responsible for what and when. Um, and as you can imagine, you know, one of the things that I think is powerful about this is in addition to allowing marketers to run different plays and tactics at accounts with at least an educated guess as to where they are in the buying journey. It also gives sellers a wealth of information about exactly what those accounts are doing. So what I'm showing you here is just one dashboard within the marketing application. Uh, but this, for example, is what a seller would look at on a daily basis. Um, and essentially, those scores are determining which accounts are hot, warm, cold. Sellers should be focusing on hot and warm accounts, obviously. Um, I could spend an hour just kind of going through every bell and whistle within this application, which we call sales intelligence. But the idea is that, um, you know, sellers have been doing account-based selling for decades. I've been in software 25 years now. I've never been at a company that wasn't selling to accounts. Um, what ABM really did was let marketing kind of catch up um, and work with sales on targeting, you know, a specific set of accounts. Um, and so really making sure that all that data that we're giving marketers access to, curating that for sellers in a way that it's easy for them to take action on it um, is, is what we do within our sales intelligence application. The last thing that I'd like to show, because I, I think we wanted to cap this demo at around 10 minutes and I'm probably there, is there is one other really cool spot uh -oh, um, where, where, where we use AI um, and it's in a product uh, we offer called conversational email. The... Um, I'm probably going to get in trouble for describing it this way, but the easiest way to describe it quickly is imagine cloning your best inside sales rep, your best BDR, um, meaning that not only can it send out emails, which by the way, marketing automation platforms can do, sales engagement platforms can do. The difference with conversational email is that it can actually reply when the prospect responds. 
That's the difference. So a prospect says, I'm interested. The conversational AI knows what to do with that information and loop in the right salesperson. The prospect says, I'd like more information. The conversational AI will go get them more information. Um, if the uh, prospect says, you know, call me back in three months, it will make a note to contact them again in three months. If they don't answer, which by the way happens to 99% of, you know, even warm outreach these days, it will continue to try for as long as you tell it to um, before it will, you know, just stop bothering that particular prospect. Um, and so it was actually using generative AI b even before ChatGPT sort of um, took the world by storm roughly two years ago. Um, and I can't show it to you. What, what I did here was I just quickly generated um, uh, an email based on a prompt that's over here. It uses um, GPT-4 uh, to generate the, all these emails. There's new functionality now that allows you to upload your own content. So as a marketer, think white papers, case studies, things like that to make the AI even smarter um, about the emails that it writes. Um, and I don't know if I should, well, I can probably say based on when this is going to come out. Um, at our user conference in mid-October, I'll be showing some features that are currently in beta uh, that really make this start to feel human. Um, and so this is kind of the part of our product today that currently leverages generative AI the most. Um, and I will say, as someone that loves to demo product, um, it is probably one of the most fun products I've gotten to demo in my entire career, uh, just because of how powerful GPT-4 is, ChatGPT, um, and, and the results that you get. Um, uh, it, it's a little scary how good these days. So um, those are some of the areas where we use AI within six cents, kind of within 10 minutes. Um, give me three hours and, and we could probably go through it all. Um, this was fantastic. And one of the reasons, Ami, that I'm so excited you joined us is I was at Breakthrough about this time last year when you guys really started to roll out conversational email. And I remember sitting in the audience, you were on stage. I think you're head of product. I remember Lotney was on stage showcasing this product. And I was blown away at how just how good it was and how powerful it was. And I think the fact that Sixth Sense was on the forefront of this, this was well before we were talking about chat GPT and how to prompt and it just felt so new. And that's why I'm really excited you're on the shows because I do feel like Sixth Sense has just been such a pioneer in the AI space. And you guys have been doing this for a long time. I've been using your buying stages for a long time with how I do my marketing. I know you kind of made the point during your demo of it gives marketers a good starting point of who, where people are at in their buying journeys. And that predictive AI is just so beneficial for helping marketers align and run personalized messaging. So again, this is a great demo. And I know as a user of this, your guys' AI functionality has been fantastic for both our sales and marketing teams. Well, I, I, I know you're coming to Breakthrough again this year, so I can't wait um, for you to see what we're going to do with the conversational email this year. Um, I was uh, on a call this morning with uh, our product manager for it, as well as the founder of Sales Whale, the company we acquired that first pioneered this technology. And I told them, you know, because so, last year there there, um, there were AI elements to it, but there were also parts that were not, a, you know, that are templated, um, probably mostly by design, um, just because it sort of allowed allows customers to feel very safe in sort of in terms of how things are going to be responded to. And so just the progress in a year, um, what we'll be showing this year at Breakthrough, I, I told Gabriel, the founder of Saleswell, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be needed on stage ne the, you know, next year. Like, you'll probably just have this AI simulation of me that can write a better, funnier script, you know, can pro by the way, can probably translate the presentation into multiple languages, but still with my voice. Uh, so this might be my last year demoing something on stage at Breakthrough. I hope not, but that's that's where it seems to be going. Yeah, I feel like we're already here first. In two years at Breakthrough, Ami's just going to be a hologram and it'll just be AI. You won't even need to be Maybe. there. <laughs> we don't even know. Um, okay, Ami, so the next and last part of this go-to-market AI show is our lightning round Q&A. The first question you actually already kind of answered, but I want to circle back to it because we've touched on it a little bit, but I do think it's very unique for Sixth Sense, which is, how long has Sixth Six Sense been building AI into your product? Yeah, so um, uh, so since inception, um, and it really was and still is kind of our big differentiator. So um, again, going back to that buying stage model, that was basically kind of like um, uh, a using AI for sort of like lead qualification, account qualification, that type of use case. 
Um, and, you know, marketers like yourself that have, have been doing it for a while are all used to kind of the lead scoring models, increase three points for this, decrease five points for that. You know, that's the way that still a lot of our competition does it. Um, you know, frankly, it was the way you had to do it. Um, and so we were kind of this lone voice in the wilderness, wilderness using AI for that purpose. Um, and, and it was definitely lonely for a while. Um, the last few years, you know, we've experienced tremendous growth as I think the market has caught up. AI has matured. You know, our own models have matured. The amount of data we can collect has matured. Companies have matured in terms of, you know, they now they've done the lead scoring model before, you know, many times and, and know what it's, you know, uh, what its benefits and its flaws are, frankly. Um, so we've really been using AI from the beginning. Again, even in this conversational email portion at the end, even though that product is probably three or four years, maybe it's four years old at most. It's been using generative AI for probably two years. And that demo last year breakthrough was probably a good six months, maybe eight months before ChatGPT kind of, you know, just blew everyone away. Um, so, you know, we use ChatGPT, GPT-4. We're testing, I think, GPT-4.5, whatever the next version is. So we're still, you know, trying to stay on the, the bleeding edge with all of that. Um, but AI has been a core part of Sixth Sense, like literally since the beginning. That's amazing. And I think I know the answer to this next question, but I want to ask it anyways, which I think as companies are, you made the point, just starting to catch up and build AI into their product where Sixth Sense has always kind of had this, but is all of this generally available for customers? People listening, can they go start using all these things that you showed on this demo tomorrow if they purchase Sixth Sense? Sarah, today, they don't even have to wait till tomorrow. Um, sure. Yes, uh, just... everything I showed today um, everything uh, I showed is everything I showed today has been part of the product. In fact, you know, for months or years, the buying stage models are probably, uh, I don't know, probably more than five years old at this point. Um, I hinted at a couple of really cool data features within conversational email. Those will be showing the general public for the first time in mid October. Um, uh, probably released either later this year, first thing next year. Um, but yes, all of the kind of core AI features in our product, um, uh, are not only generally available, but I would say battle tested at this point. Amazing. Um, and then you've kind of hinted at this, and I don't know how much you can share knowing with Breakthrough coming up here soon, but what's next on your AI roadmap? What are you guys at Sixth Sense thinking about in the future for AI and your product? Yeah, so um, <laughs> a bunch of ways to answer this. Um, so yes, I definitely hinted at some of it within conversational email. Um uh, our roadmap is a closely guarded secret. Yes, yes. Um, I am, and I'm not saying that to be um, to be secretive. Um, I am literally working with our SVP of product again on the product roadmap keynote for breakthrough. You know, in less than a month, and I still have just a, a barely any information about it. Um, so, you know, um, what I can say safely is we will continue to figure out areas uh, where we can incorporate a AI throughout the products. Um, you know, one other area, for example, that we've played around with a lot is something that we call um, AI driven orchestrations, meaning that instead of you as a marketer having to figure out which accounts you want to put in a different segment to run display advertising campaigns, um, let AI pick the accounts that it thinks are most likely to respond to display advertising. And that doesn't necessarily mean a click. I mean, click through rates are dismal, B2C, B2B. That's always been the case. Um, you know, it's a big reason we're heavy on measuring view through rate. Like yep. we do all see ads, even though we don't all click on ads. Um, so if we think that an account might have a propensity to visit your website, for example, after, you know, having seen a few impressions um, of display ads, like let's put them in a segment rather than forcing you as the marketer to figure out which accounts um, you want to do. And you can do both. You, you know, you you can, hey, these are 100 accounts we want to target for this reason, with this message, for this campaign. Of course, you'll always be able to do that. But if you also wanted to say, hey, let me put five grand in a, you know, a campaign over here and let me let AI pick the accounts. Like that's an, uh, an area of the product where we haven't used a lot of AI historically, but we plan to. Um, but it is literally kind of infused throughout the product. Um, and I would expect that to continue. And I will plug, knowing that breakthrough is coming up, I am sure you guys will be rolling out some things that are exciting on your roadmap that we can't quite talk about on the show today. So if you're not going to breakthrough, I am assuming that Sixth Sense will make that publicly available after breakthrough happens in mid-October. And I'm so excited. I don't to read the roadmap. Or what you guys plug. I guess I'm no, excited. I was, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. 
the um go to breakthrough if you want to see the roadmap i think yeah. it's one of the few main stage presentations we don't share publicly Ooh, okay um, so everyone's so, gonna fly to frisco yeah exactly uh, okay and, and that's that... frisco texas not short for san francisco yes someone did ask me that we're going to texas it's not here in the bay area yes yes um okay ami last question what other ai powered products is your go-to-market team using in your tech stack that you've enjoyed using yeah so um uh i mean obviously like six cents is kind of the core um of our go-to-market so we there's a lot of ai in it we use it all um we're testing the boundaries with it there are a couple other uh kind of tools in the toolbox that we use so on the front end uh, we use Mutiny for personalization. There's some AI built into that. Uh, we use Alice as a gifting platform. It uses AI to figure out, you know, how to personalize gifts for folks. So frequently using that um, as door openers, you know, to, to uh, book meetings, generate pipeline, things like that. Um, we use a tool called Writer, um, or our content team is using an AI tool called Writer to help write a lot of copy. I'm not on that team, so I'm not privy to everything that they're doing, but we've gotten some presentations uh, internally about what we're doing with it. And it's very cool. Um, we use Clary uh, for revenue forecasting. We use Gong for call recording. I know sellers are super excited about their newest AI feature, which is kind of like the call summary that it types up now for you. Um, uh, so Gong would be another one. Those are probably kind of the, the, the main technologies within our tech stack that use AI. I mean, obviously there's lots of other tools, um, those are kind of the ones that come top of mind. Yep. Those are all great brands. And I think we've we've heard nothing but good things, I think, about the AI functionality and all of those tools that you mentioned. So that wraps us on this episode of Go to Market AI. Ami, thank you so much for joining us today and showing us that behind the scenes look. I know it made it feel more real for me. Even as a user, it's always great to hear from the company themselves how we should be thinking about the product and showing us this look. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah.